Okay, okay, okay. Hello, all songwriters, pianists, composers, and all other musicians out there. Well, today we're going to talk about something really cool, and um, I hope you like it. I love this program, by the way. Loom, it's amazing. I recommend it to you. Um, so, there's a lot going on here. And since a lot of you guys requested that I should talk about this progression that me and my friend Renzo came up with not too long ago, I'm going to do so. And I'm just going to walk through, walk you through the harmony, basically all, everything that happens vertically, okay? Just so that you get an idea of what's my compositional process and what are some of the composition techniques that I use for this, okay? And um, I want to try to make this as entertaining and educational as possible. So here we go. This is what happens and what happened as well. That's the general phrase, right? And those are the chords. Now, it is important to have a key center. The key center in this case is E minor. Just like you know it, right? I'm having an E minor 7 chord right there. And then we go immediately to C sharp 7. With some tensions. Then we go to C major 7. C sharp minor 7. And there is this chord here that we should be calling something like F7, which would be the sub 7 for E, but we're actually going to play it as a C minor 6. How is it that this works? And how did I, how did we come up with? Well, of course, what it, the most important thing about this is to be creative to get inspired from anything that you want to get inspiration from and feel the music right that's the most important thing so it's about where you feel like you want to go right and a lot of this happens in the bass and the melody okay so for me it's more like the melody guides where i want to get to and the bass is sort of everything that holds everything up okay um so after having said this, the bass is going there. That's what I wanted it to go. Goes to C. Uh, back to the flat. And then to C again. So it's it's pretty simple, right? Now, if I, I what I it's all very oral. Okay, I'm not saying, okay, I'm going to go from the one minor to the sub seven of the six. No, I just do it and it sounds good and I like it. And then I am going to analyze it, right? And actually understand what is it actually happening. So if we were to analyze this, we're playing the one minor first. We're going to sub five, seven of six, which is D sharp seven. With the flat nine and the sharp nine. Okay. I particularly, particularly like that sound a lot. Uh, and that gives us a nice landing to a more um, soothing progression or chord, which is C major 7. Uh, which is the 6 major. Now we're moving to... We're borrowing a chord from the parallel major scale, which would be a major, which is a C sharp minor with the ninth. And then we're supposedly, what the, you know, the most logical explanation to this chord would be the sub 5 7 that goes to E, which would be F7. But we have decided to play it with the bass on C. Right? Okay, so um, 
what's happening with that chord is, is, is that it's an inversion, okay? We're playing it over the fifth, and the fifth happens to be C, right? So instead of playing an F7 with a ninth, right? Uh, we're gonna play it over fifth. But here, up here, we're kind of changing a little bit the, um, uh, we're changing the voicing. So it does sound like a C minor six. <laughs> You know, at the end of the day, that's what it is. But if I consider it a C minor six, that has nothing to do with E minor, okay? But at the end of the day, it kind of sounds a lot smoother than if I played that F7, or if I played something that um, would make a lot more sense diatonically, which is the the five natural, right? The five seven, which would be uh, P7. Right, you see that relationship right there? If I play down there. Compare it to this sound. Ah, right? But it's really coming from here. So just by changing the bass line, you get a completely different texture. And that's the richness of music. Okay, that's the whole structure, and what I'm using here is the ear to really tell me where do I want that bass to go, and where do I want the melody to go. The melody is also guiding me. Now, if we talk about the melody, oops. When I reach, you have to have a, a, a point of rest. You have to have a point where you are arriving, right? So this is the melody initiating. And it's getting to that A, so I was like, okay, that A sounds like it should sound a little bit more tense, and that's why, I, you know, this, this chord comes there. Right, I was like, okay, that's pretty tense. Now it feels like it wants to resolve to something that is more relaxed and chill, which is C major. So it's just, you know, it's, it's just... Where is that vase guiding me versus where do I want the melody to arrive? And what are, where are these points of rest happening? And how we move from um, smooth to tense, smooth to tense, right? And that's basically life, right? Light and darkness and, um, you know, positive, negative. It's all about those poles, right? And then when are we, where are we going again? We go here. That's model interchange right there, okay? That chord has nothing to do with E minor. This chord has to do with E major, which will be the sixth in E major. But we just thought it was so cool to put it there. <laughs> so, you know, you, you, you really have to go, you really have to surpass the rules and go with the sound that you want. And then you analyze it. But then when you analyze it, it's so much cooler because now you know what's going on really, right? What's really going on. So after that, um, it lands on that, that weird chord. Which is, I guess, E minor 6. And then we're back to basics. Okay? That's all about this progression. Now, the and the melody also takes you there, because you're here. And, and that's sort of like a, a nice change, right? Uh, the melody plays the seventh major. And because I thought of that, you know, like major seven, okay, let's play a major seven. Maybe that's go that goes well with that melody, right? Hitting that seven right there, and it does. Right? And again, it's like the melody gives you these hints where you're like, oh, that should sound pretty tense, or or that that should sound pretty smooth. Anyways, that's this first explanation about this chord progression. I hope you liked this video. I'm trying to not make these videos too long. Um, there is a master class coming up next week. We're gonna talk about learning how to learn songs faster using only your ears. And this has, and I'm talking, gonna talk about uh, active listening, relative pitch, and some composition techniques. And I'll go back to this example, all right? I hope to see you all there. I'll give you info about the exact date and time next week. Stay tuned for more videos. Take care.